Shalom and blessings, warriors of you and the truth. We are continuing on with video two of the lie, remember? Um, we are on what is truth? Yehukanen 1838 explains what truth is. How can we know the truth? Yehukanen 831 and 32 explains that. <coughs> What does the truth set us free from? <clears throat> the truth sets us free from the lie. From the huge lies that we are fed by pastors, preachers, by the schools, the school system, about the pagan holidays, and about the name the heck, the biggest part no. of it is the, is the hiding of our Creator's name. It's right here, Russell. Russell. <clears throat> Well, are the teaching authorities of men leading us into truth or the broad road to death? Go to the pastors and show them the traditions of men have caused their loss of saltiness. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, these questions have obvious answers, and anyone wielding the sword of truth can shred the cardboard lies of the dragon. The dragon is afraid because we will use the sword on him. Paul explains how our weapons are not fleshly. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not fight according to the flesh. For the weapons we fight with are not fleshly, but mighty in Yahweh for overthrowing strongholds, overthrowing reasonings, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Yahuwah, taking captive every thought to make it obedient to the Mashiach, and being ready to evaluate all obedience when your obedience is accomplished. Corinthians 10, 3 through 6, BYMB. <clears throat> Yahusha's yoke or teaching is easy, and it is his, his will that none perish. <clears throat> Our mission is to warn all mankind to repent. Teach all nations to obey everything you who should command it of us. <clears throat> there is one Torah for the native born and the foreigner who joins himself to Yahweh, just as the first assembly in the wilderness was com comprised of a mixed multitude of peoples. Here in the last days, the message of deliverance is being sent into all the nations. The Torah of kindness excludes no one from joining Yahweh through his covenant, and foreigners are especially precious to him. See Yahshayahu Isaiah 56. <clears throat> all who guard his Shabbat are welcomed by Yahweh. That's our outward sign that we follow Yahuwah. We are his, that we rest on the Shabbat. We don't buy or sell on the Shabbat. We stay in our homes on Shabbat. Um, foreigners will be given a name better than sons and daughters. The sons and daughters are his cultivated fig tree and love the grafted in branches, all sharing in the life of the root together. Acts 17, 30 through 31. Although Elohim overlooked the ignorance of earlier times, he now commands all men everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. The hordes are taught to come up to the steeples on their Sundays to worship. That's sun worship. To worship the L-O-R-D. Baal. Hoping somehow someone will explain what Yahuwah's word means. But they never do. Yahuwah told us what day is Shabbat. And not to go out of our place on that day. To stay in your place. Exodus 6, 16, 29 explains that there. We are to rest in all our dwellings 
Obedience is worship. Our teachers are the source of our error. For the leaders of the of this people of this people lead them astray, and those who are guided by them are in confusion. They're stuck in the delusion. Yahshua Yahu Isaiah 9 16. Yahuwah told us his mark is his Shabbat, a sign forever between him and his people. Exodus 31 17 explains that. Our bond with him is not a shade of skin or denomination. It's him within us. He's inside of us. Colossians 1 and Ephesians 3. Teachers are causing disobedience, divisions, and hatred, missing the goal of love, desiring to be teachers of Torah, but they do not understand what they are saying or that which they so confidently affirm. 1 Timothy 1, 1 7. Only the Aharonic covenant is obsolete now, done away with. The everlasting covenant is written on our hearts. We're scattered into the nations because we would not obey his covenant of love. And he is about to regather us from the ends of the Eretz, the ends of the earth, Deuteronomy 4. He is calling for many hunters and fishers to train a remnant of obedient workers to warn mankind to be restored to favor and sealing us as his property. Psalm 91 and Isaiah 7, 18-25, you all too. 1 Thessalonians 5 is the last one. And hundreds of others repeated warnings. If teachers do not teach you who is Torah, <coughs> then there is no light in them. Yahshua Yahu, Isaiah 8, 20. That, that would, or, sorry. What will it cost you as a pastor if you teach your assembly the truth instead of traditions? I know what it would cost them. Uh, they wouldn't be um, they wouldn't be uh, tax exempt anymore because they're not teaching what the government wants them to teach or what the papacy wants them to teach, like the Vatican. Um, <clears throat> What will it cost you if you don't and keep telling them the lies our fathers have handed down to us? It would cost them um, their salvation. They will be treated worse for being teachers of lies. They will be the least in the kingdom or they will be in shale for teaching lies. They should be teaching how to come to salvation, they should be teaching the true name. Hear me, Yahuwah, or Jeremiah 16, 19. O oh, Yahuwah, my strength and my stronghold and my refuge, in the day of distress, to you the nations will come from the ends of the earth and say, Our fathers have inherited nothing but lies, futility, and things of no profit. We need to learn what he likes, not men. Ephesians 5.10 Okay. Have I now become your enemy by telling you the truth? Galatians 4.16 Who has deceived you? <clears throat> your teachers, who else? Florida. Yes. Remember, Paul was concerned his labors were in vain among the Galatians because they were falling back into their former pagan days, months, and years. These were their old, weak, and miserable principles. He referred to he referred to at Galatians 4.9, not Yahuwah's Torah. We need to sober up and test ourselves to see if what we think and act on can be proven by Yahuwah's words or we will be found standing in the long line on a broad road headed for destruction. Drunk people don't wake up easily, so we have to keep trying until they do. Revelation 18.3 All the nations drunk the wine of the passion of her immorality. The kings of the earth were immoral with her. 
and the merchants of the earth had grown wealthy through the extravagance of her luxury. All the fertility practices have made the merchants wealthy. Birthdays, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, Halloween. And now you must decide who you will serve. Will you serve men or Yahuwah? Will you serve Hashatan or Yahuwah? You can only serve one master. You are a servant of the one you obey. Romans 6.16 Woe to those who mislead one of his little ones. Knowing the elements will melt with intense heat, what sort of people ought you to be? Join us. Be restored to favor. Secrets of the KJV. He will speak to this, pe this people with a jabbering lip and a foreign tongue. Before we unpack the wonderful activities of Yahushua's spirit here in the last days, even the recent centuries, let's consider why the world speaks English and was taught to speak to the world in that particular jabbering lip. And then there's a picture of the swan. <clears throat> Something you could have never seen coming. A black swan event is a term used to describe an unforeseen event that comes as a surprise with major effects. It is impossible to predict, but with the benefit of hindsight, it can be identified for what it is. For over 400 years, the KJV has trained the entire world to speak the English language. Yahuwah is speaking to them and they are now primed for the big announcement. Everyone alive at Yahushua's return will experience the greatest event in all of history, as every eye will see him coming. Why and how is now is now going to be explained. A prophecy is being, being fulfilled right now. Average people are learning the Hebrew name of our creator is Yahuwah, not G-O-D or L-O-R-D. Furthermore, the evidence of a huge conspiracy to hide the name is exposed. The first Protestants remained Catholic. They only protest protested the idea of the papacy being the head of the Kirke, or the C-H-U-R, or C-H. The KJV is an Anglican Catholic translation. The KJV was used to teach English to the whole world for 400 years was based on the Latin Vulgate, and now helps point out what was withheld from us. The missing name stands out when you realize it's not in any of the popular English translations. Truth is being restored and tra tradition exposed. The famine of Yahuwah's word is ending as people are discovering the Hebrew name of our creator. The name is conspicuous in its absence. It is the key of knowledge withheld by those responsible for teaching all the nations the message of deliverance. The scriptures are Hebrew in origin. The English language fulfills a prophecy at Yahshayahu, Isaiah 28, 11, where it tells us Yahuwah will speak to his people through a jabbering lip and a foreign tongue, meaning language, foreign language. Yahuwah allowed the British colonies to flourish around the globe just as the printing press was invented. This spread the English language throughout the earth, using the KJV to do so. Foreign students learned English in their classrooms as children by reading from the KJV. Missionaries were sent to accomplish this, in many cases to cause more of the lies, or more of the lie, to spread. But Yahushua used what they intended for evil, for good. This training has lasted for 400 years. It prepared the world so all could understand the conspiracy to conceal the true name. The famine is over for those who are hungry for the highest of all things, the word and name of Yahuwah. Psalm 138, 2. KJV, evidence of a conspiracy. Translators hijacked the name. If they didn't, where is it? It was hidden in uh, glass jars in the caves. Um, I believe it was the caves of Qumran, if I'm not mistaken, um, in the Dead Sea Scrolls. It was hidden um, uh, 
it was hidden in front of our eyes on the commandment stones um, and the low stone that's New Mexico stone. It was hidden in many places. Translators had, okay, I'm sorry. For those who diligently seek the truth, the tools are available to find the true name of our deliverer. Translations, translations have hidden his name from us, and anyone can see this by reading the preface of their NIV. I forgot to remind you, I'm sorry. The NIV admits substituting the name with a device, replacing it with the English word L-O-R-D in all capital letters. This was inherited from the word Dominus in the Latin Vulgate. So see four letters there, four letters right here. So they hit it using a English word. But this English word means Baal, and that's a demonic name. This was inherited from the word Dominus in the Latin Vulgate. The English translations Hey boss, uh, I started it was in okay, yeah. This was inherited from the word Dominus in the Latin Vulgate. All right, baby. Love you. Love you, baby. The English translations developed in several stages through men who were motivated for Yahuwah's word to be known by average people. In 1382, an English Catholic priest named John Wycliffe published an English translation of Jerome's Latin Vulgate. His extensive work laid the initial foundation for all the English translations that followed. Translations of Yahuwah's word into any language but Latin was met with deadly results. Um, I'm going to interrupt myself right here. I am just uh, very happy and embracing Yahuwah that um, my husband, he immersed on um, last Shabbat. So, um, I'm just so, I'm really happy and things have been really peaceful. So, um, I just want to let you guys know. Um, the translators and those helping them were killed, some having their bones exhumed and burned many years after their deaths. Some people were burned alive for simply teaching their children to recite what is known as the L-O-R-D's prayer in English. Wait a minute. I never knew that. That is horrible. Let me read that again. Some people were burned alive for simply teaching their children to recite what is known as the Eloise prayer in English. For over 1,200 years, Jerome's Latin Vulgate was the only text used by Catholics. They did so much to hide the name even the genocide, the mass genocide to the Jews, that was to hide the true name. They don't teach you that in school either. Um, printing it in Latin was the first major project for Gutenberg's uh, movable type printing press in the, in the 1450s. The Gutenberg Bible, or B-I-B-L-E, sorry. Uh, was the basis for the English translation known as the Authorized Version, or King James Version. The Latin Vulgate used a code known as a Christogram for the name of Yahusha, I-E-S-B. This was a device used as a substitution for the proper name of our Deliverer, and it was printed in the KJV. The Hebrew name Yahusha is not found, and instead the letters I-E-S-B are inserted to obscure the true name from the reader. I am your deliverer. Um, saving typesetters time and space, two Latin V's were combined to form a W. You can find that at torazone.net. Right here. And it wasn't this, just this past Shabbat, it was the Shabbat prior that my husband was immersed, but I'm so happy. Um, the Latin letter shaped B sounded like our modern U. The letter W was invented as a piece of metal type to combine two Latin V shapes. 
into a new space saving letter. Pages were printed one at a time and each letter was set by hand. 75 years after the printing of the Latin Vulgate by Gutenberg, uh, William Tyndale published the Nazarene writings from Greek into English. 1526. In 1535, King Henry, it's V and three eyes. I forget if you subtract if the eyes are after it or if you add. It's confusing to me. So it's either King Henry the the eighth or the or the second. I believe it's King Henry the eighth. So I'm just gonna go with that. Um, okay. So, in 1536, King Henry VIII arrested him and had him strangled and burned at the stake for his English publication, which he smuggled into England from Germany. This was the first major effort to mass-produce the scriptures in English, the adulterous B.I.B.L.E. of 1631. A typesetter must have been very tired the day he was setting the type for Exodus 2014 for a revised printing of the KJV. He made collectors extremely happy by leaving out a word, and that word was not. The London printing firm was in big trouble over it. Another error is in the, this same printing. At Deuteronomy 524, instead of referring to the greatness of G-O-D, the typesetter inserted great A-S-S-E, now, that's a huge, huge mistake. A grotesque mistake. These incredible bloopers have caused a great uproar over the centuries. It seems people were commanded to adulterate. The adulterous B-I-B-L-E. Okay. Some of it is cut off. I'll show you the picture, but I'll read it. I'll read it the best I can first. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thy days may be long upon the land. L-O-R-D, thy G-O-D. I can't read that word. Gi-U-E-T, thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt commit adultery. Wow. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness to thy, er, of thy neighbor. There's a few words cut off, so I just added the of, of in there. Um, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Okay. See, that's why I have to kind of improvise a little because it's cut off a little bit. But that is a huge, huge mistake. That's horrible. Thou shalt commit adultery. That is definitely a typo, and that's definitely a giant mistake. That is a very disturbing. In 1890, James Strong produced a concordance listing for every word of scripture based on the KJV. Each word could be easily associated with the, with the Hebrew or Greek word it was translated from. It was then possible for anyone without a knowledge of Hebrew or Greek to research the text, and it ignored the Latin entirely. Untrained people could perceive the conspiracy to hide the name of our Creator and shatter the language barrier that concealed the true name. The conspiracy to annul the practice of Torah and conceal the name began with the earliest beginning of Christianity. Constantine called the elders to meet at Nicaea in 325 to formulate the ground rules. Athanasius represented the views of Alexandria's Didascalia, Greek teaching authority. He defined Catholicism as the belief in one G.O.D. in three persons, 
thus rendering the ideas of Arius to be heresy. Arius denied the traditional doctrine of the Trinity. Constantine imposed the death penalty on all who denied who all who denied the Trinity doctrine. So all of us Nazarene would be kaput if we lived in these days. Um, a belief in the Trinity is central to one's salvation, according to the Catholicism. In 1553, John Calvin burned the, the theologian Michael Servetus at the stake at Geneva, Switzerland, for his denial of the Trinity. Michael believed Yahusha is Yahuwah in the flesh. Scripture says the blood of the Ruach HaKodesh purchased us. See Acts 20.28 and Yahshua Yahu 25.9. Um, okay. I'll do two more lessons uh, for today. Was King James a Catholic? He would not have considered himself a Roman Catholic but he would have embraced being a member of Anglican Catholic Kirke. At age 38, he commissioned a translation for that very same Anglican Catholic Kirke to be used exclusively throughout his realm. King James was born in England into Anglican Catholicism. He was born June 19, 1566, in Edinburgh Castle. Uh, the future king of England was six months old, an age we must acknowledge is too young to walk or have meaningful speech skills. In 1604, at the age of 38, King James commissioned the translation known as the Authorized Version, and it was completed in 1611, using a team of approximately 12 men, hmm, like the 12 disciples, but these men were writing scripture that hid the true name. So they're the exact opposite. Um, Twelve men working on various assigned texts. By 1607, they had their work very closely resembling the bishops' B.I.B.O.E. A previous work also based on the Latin Vulgate. After many revisions and misprints were being made over the centuries, a standardized version of the KJV was printed in 1769, which is what most people today are using, but thinking they are reading the 1611 edition. Wow. To believe his authorized version as superior to all English versions, one must admit it is a Catholic translation. It inherited all the errors and omissions of the Latin Vulgate, including the word crux. The Greek word storos matches the Hebrew word nos and is a single upright pole. When Jerome Eusebius Sophonius uh, translated the Hebrew and Greek into the Latin Vulgate in the late 4th century, he avoided the Latin word storo, which matched the Greek word storos and inserted crux. Today's KJV uses the Latin source word cross, the primary symbol of sun worship, first brought into the new faith called Catholicism during the reign of Constantine. Why do people call Yahuwah the L-O-R-D? The Septuagint Greek substituted Yahuwah with Kyrios at Psalm 23. The Latin Vulgate Dominus Rigid Me. The KJV, the LORD is my shepherd. The Hebrew, Yahuwah Roy. The BYNV, Yahuwah is my shepherd. The name has been uh, intentionally concealed on purpose. Malachi 3 shows us how Yahuwah notices those speaking together about him and who meditate on his name. That then shall those who fear Yahuwah speak to one another, and Yahuwah listen and hear, and a book of remembrance be written before him. 
of those who fear Yahuwah and those who think upon his name, and they shall be mine, said Yahuwah Sabor. On the, on the yom that I prepare a treasured possession, and I shall spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again see the difference between the righteous and the wrong. I should have used my right hand for the righteous. Yeah. Righteous and the wrong. Um, between one who serves Elohim and one who does not serve him. Malachi 3, 16 through 18, BYNB. Um, this next lesson is pretty long. So I'll teach that in my next video. Um, I forgot what I was going to say here. Me? Okay, it'll come to me. Yahuwah loves all of us dearly, and like I read earlier, he does not want any of us to perish, but we cannot beat a dead horse if we come across someone, even if it's a family member of us, if we come across someone that um, their ears are deafened, they have strong delusion, and they will not hear the truth. Those are the people that can't be saved. And the only thing we can do is pray for them. I'm speaking on this because I believe my mother and my, my siblings, I believe that they are still living in Babylon, still living in the delusion. And they will never hear the truth. And they will never take it to heart. Um, I love you all, brothers and sisters, warriors of you and the truth. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson lesson number two and um i don't know if i'm going to continue with with the psalms lesson right now i'm going to keep the page marked so i remember where i'm at so i can continue on with the lessons but i know that um one of my dear sisters uh loves psalms and i don't i don't want to have to talk like this um uh, reading the psalms uh because i know she likes to listen to it and she, and she can't hear me when i when i have to talk like issues in my life, it could take up to six months to get fixed, and I don't know if it's going to take the full six months, or if it's going to be like this for, for, for forever. Like, it hurts me. But I feel like, I feel like we're kind of on, we're kind of on the cusp of why this is still happening to us. My husband had a job today, a cleaning job, um, for the business I tried to create for us, we did. We we aren't really. We don't really get many customers very often. It's a cleaning, pretty much mostly cleaning. But I have other stuff advertised there. But uh, cleaning or interior, exterior painting. But anyways, he did a job today, and he came home, and like when when he was on the phone, he um, he was crying, and then when he came home, he was crying, and he hugged me really tightly, and he said. The way that man acted, he was like, he's like, I, he's like, I'm so sorry for how I treated you in the past. He said, I will never, ever do that to you ever again. And he just kept saying how sorry he was. And, um, he hasn't, he hasn't been that person for, in a very long time, but we both have PTSD, but his, like, he remembers what happened. And he remembers how bad things were when we were in our dark days, when we were still using. Um, but he said he loved me so much that he will never be that person again. And he will never do, he will never be mean to me ever because of how he used to be when we were using. And that's, that's why we're trying to get this modification fixed because we haven't had a fight in years. It's been years. <laughs> But that man being really rotten and evil to him and yelling, yelling at him, yelling at his wife. 
it made my husband go back to when he was mean to me and and he said he never ever wants to do that to me again and he said he never ever ever will i believe it's been about four years five years since we've had a fight like that and that order that is supposed to be modified that order was a it was put in effect in 2018, but that doesn't make any sense because in 2018, we were still living together. So I believe they messed up the wording because that order was supposed to be between my oldest daughter that Floyd raised as his own until she was taken from us. It wasn't supposed to be between me and him. They did another order in 2019 after my grandma died. So, um, uh, well, after my grandma died or possibly died because I've seen her headstone and my grandfather's has the year of his birth and his death. Hers has her year of birth and no year of death. Where's my grandma? I feel like she might be locked away in some nursing home or my mother has her locked up in the house or something. It's just insane. And I was her, my grandma's favorite. She was like my mother. She was... She was my mother, and I have no one else. And me and Floyd, the only family we have is each other. And and my extended family of you, who my not serene brothers and sisters, I love you all so much. And I'm so glad you guys have stayed with me and stuck by me, even when I have to do my videos silently. I love you all. Shalom and blessings.